Hello, and welcome back for this BricsCAD BIM V25 breakout. In this video, we are going to address our newest feature that demonstrates the Brix's commitment to productive BIM collaboration. In BricsCAD BIM V25, we've implemented the Information Delivery Specification, called IDS for short. This is an XML format standardized information flow developed by Building Smart and released in 2020. But let me begin by mentioning that since its release in 2020, the IDS has been successfully integrated into BIM software from companies such as Celebri and BIM Colab. However, these are IDS applications on the data validation side of a project development. Relying solely on model checkers means your team may be developing their work for weeks before they fully understand if they are complying with your project's IDS or not. BricsCAD BIM is amongst the first BIM authoring solutions that builds the IDS right into your project development and makes it flexible, able to be adjusted for each phase of your project. In this video, I'm going to cover this in detail, but as an introduction, know that this is a genuine advancement in BIM authoring software, one capable of guiding the first-time BIM collaborator towards providing real value on the project, as well as assisting the most experienced BIM developer in ways they never realized they could use the help. And with that, let's get started. The IDS begins with the project's BIM lead. These will be the individuals on a project with a real understanding of what deliverable requirements each trade will have at each stage. When you join a new project, your BIM lead will be responsible for distributing your project's BIM execution plan, which will increasingly include the project's IDS. The first thing to remark about this is that although BricsCAD is a DWG-based CAD tool, BricsCAD BIM is an IFC classification BIM authoring solution. In the context of IDS, this is important. Whatever properties or property sets, called P-sets, are defined as necessary by your BIM lead will have precisely the same definitions as defined by Building Smart in the IFC classification schema. For this example, I've received an IFC asset from the project structural engineer. And to keep this example simple, we're going to say that this week's priority is the further detailing of a single load-bearing wall that will have an impact on the parking structure layout below. In BricsCAD BIM, getting started on a new project is often as easy as a quick use of the import command. Once I've imported a digital asset, I can both navigate it using the structure panel command and gain a better understanding of what data has been attached using the properties panel. In the case of BricsCAD BIM structure panel, your digital asset is again structured according to the IFC classification schema. And in the case of an entity's properties, this is the same familiar interface that you will have been using previously for your 2D CAD drawings. But notice, when I select one of my newly acquired project-specific structural walls, I'm not yet receiving the detailed information I would have been expecting. For this, I can simply import an IDS corresponding to a previous stage of the project. And within a few clicks, the included LOI in this particular asset has been increased. I have done this with the new BIM properties command in BricsCAD BIM V25. And we now have the information we need to proceed with the initial phases of our scope. As a systems manufacturer on our project, we are going to be particularly interested in populating what will eventually be a federated model with what the seasoned CAD user will know as blocks. But in BricsCAD BIM, these are IFC classified entities that can be alternatively thought of as data-rich digital objects. For this particular wall, we laid out and identified the requirement for four facade panel types. Each type is going to have its specific dimension requirements, and from that, we can begin to quantify the subcomponents that will be required. Perhaps now is a good time to investigate what the project team is requesting from us using our project's information delivery specification. I'll take this occasion to first remove the previous IDS that I had imported a few moments ago. This was the specification being used at a previous stage and within a scope that is not our own. To do this, we simply remove the IDS from the same BIM properties dialog box and save the changes to the DWG. 
This is the IDS that has been supplied, specific to the development of enclosure systems. Within the IFC classification schema, this is known as the IFC covering cladding and is a child of the IFC covering class. Within the BIM properties dialog box, we can already review the P-sets that are going to be imported to satisfy this particular IDS. I can see here that for each facade module being introduced into the project, details related to the manufacturer type information are going to be required. Here, we're going to begin seeing the true advantages of BricsCAD BIM being structured according to the most universally accepted BIM standard for the classification of object data. Let's say that upon importing our project's IDS, there are several properties that are currently unfamiliar to us. Luckily, we can refer to the Building Smart Data Dictionary, the BSDD, and look up any one of these listed properties. Not only our trade, but the whole of the project team can be confident that we're all working from the same basic definitions when discussing our BIM assets and their LOI. Now that we have a solid understanding of what is being asked of us, we're going to open the first of our facade panel types as a block. The IDS has been imported and the required data has been input. From here, we can use the create library block command to begin building a BIM content library and populate it with the remaining content types required throughout the project. And finally, once complete, we will again return to what will become our trades contribution to a federated model. To populate with our engineered components, we again use the create library block command and the BM insert command to orientate and position the various facade panel types throughout the model. Just like that, we've distributed not only an LOD 350, but the corresponding LOI as is required according to our project's IDS. Now, this is a simple example, but imagine you've just been introduced to a complex project with several different trades being coordinated in a virtual environment. And imagine each of those trades has a different understanding of what information is required from their team to allow the other project collaborators to develop their respective scopes. This was BIM before the IDS. And now, can you imagine being introduced to your first BIM project? How confident do you think you would be that you could look at any classification schema and identify precisely what is being required of you or how to communicate it within a BIM asset? I can tell you from experience, it's not very likely you're feeling very confident at all. And this was BIM adoption before BricsCAD BIM v25. Whether your experience with delivering BIM assets to a broader AEC project team or you're participating in your first project with BIM deliverables. BricsCAD BIM V25 has truly made the job that much easier with the introduction of information delivery specifications. Thank you.